Bishop Noel Jones, and I'm so glad to be able to come on today in a makeshift environment. We did everything we could to be on on time, but we just had so many technical difficulties, and it's not because we didn't start to set this up on time. It's just because of things that we had no control over, absolutely no control. And so we're just very grateful to God. We will be in this makeshift environment for a while because uh, that's all we have right now. And uh, it's a good thing because it's a transitional kind of a situation. And if you're uh, very faithful to hold on and be patient, and uh, we talked about uh, having long-suffering patience and long-suffering with joy. So if you hold on, uh, we will get back to having our most wonderful Bible classes. I enjoy your presence, and I know that God has been with us through these classes and has blessed us in a great way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come on again, and you know it's deeply set in our hearts that we would always minister to your people. So we pray now, Lord, that you will allow us and afford us the opportunity in this new place as we develop it into the state-of-the-art building. We pray, God, that you will give us the finances, that you will bless us with the following that will support and lift up your kingdom. We thank you for everyone who's on. We pray that you bless them right now. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. As you can see, and I, I, I need you just to tell everybody somewhere that we are on today. So if you spend a little time, uh, touch the lives of those around you and tell them that we are on. I can't make any projections to the board uh, today, but it's important to understand uh, that we can get real comfortable in the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. And when I look at the big screen and the time that we had in the building we were in, uh, I can say surely God was with us and it was a marvelous time that we had together in that building. He's taking us up to another level. We're in another dimension right now, and that is that we want to be more community-oriented. We don't need 7,000 seats every Sunday. We need to move into a more community-based operation that's 24-7. And that's why we have acquired this building. And when we open it, you will have a marvelous time. We have over 580 uh, stalls for cars. So we got a car garage that can contain over 580 cars. We have a building that is five stories. We're going to do all kinds of community things imaginable, everything that anyone would need in our community, we will supply and we will still have a, pl a place until we develop something else, which is a five-year plan, we will still have a place to house between 12 and 1400 people. And I think that's a good, a good, good place to be at a time like this. And we pray that uh, you will pray with us, that you'll continue to support us uh, our Cash App and our Zelle and all of the things that we receive money from will be there on the screen and we want you to support. We'll just leave it on the screen and as God moves on you, we want you to bless. And for those of you who assemble with us, uh, you can easily uh, do and give online and uh, we will provide a place for those who like to give in person to give. Uh, our Sundays now, we, the next two Sundays until the end of the month, we will be at the Page Temple Church of God in Christ. But beginning next month, we're going to make a move and uh, I will have that address to you uh, before this session is over. Uh, we'll have that address. We're going to be with uh, Pastor District Elder Nissan Stewart, and I will get that to you before uh, this session is over. We're working out now uh, with the school in the neighborhood and working out with the bank so that we can get the kind of parking. Uh, the church holds about 650 with chairs everywhere. So please, you got to come early to get a seat. We're starting at 8 
on the first Sunday in October and we're going to go till 10 and then open up for them to have services so please remember those announcements we'll throw everything at you email blast uh, Facebook YouTube Instagram we'll throw it all at you so that you can know where we are uh, I have been enjoying the sessions in in Ephesians uh, and we were dealing with the prayers and I've just been having a, a wonderful time I wish I had the equipment don't have the equipment so you just have to go discourse with me and I have you here uh, I have everybody here with me, Gourmet, Coffee Beans, Perla, Monique, Trudy Brown, Catherine Powell. I've got Linda Young, uh, uh, Dariel Murphy. I've got everybody with me here, uh, Lydia Stevens. I've got Deborah West. Uh, I've got Barbara Waring. I've got Claire Hicks. Uh, everybody's with me. So uh, I've got Sharon Lawson, uh, Ruth Moore. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Donika Logan. So I've got everybody with me and I thank you for being patient. I thank you for just being such wonderful people. I mean, it's just incredulous, uh, the people. And now that we're making this move, it's a, it's a, it's a gigantic move. But it's, a, of course, according to the will of God. So now, uh, in Ephesians 3 and 14, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Again, always remember, according to, not out of, the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that he being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that she might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, we, we spent some time there. We talked about for this cause and it goes back to chapter 3 and actually goes back to chapter 3 and verse 1 when he talks about for this cause. And the intent, of course, when he's dealing with this cause, when it goes all the way back to 3 and, uh, and 13, I, I think it is, it's 3 and 13, uh, where he uses the wherefore to introduce that particular passage. And uh, what he's saying to us essentially is, uh, and I'm going to read it for you, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, and that's actually 3 and 1. And then he says, as he goes further now, the cause is the relationship that he has with the Gentiles and he wants to bring them into understanding that there's no separation in the body of Christ between any people. What we're having in America right now is, is, is problematic because I personally believe that the divide in our country and I don't know where in the world you would be if you didn't understand and see what's going on in America. The divide in our country is primarily in my thinking, not based on the political differences, but it's based on the fact that the body of Christ has allowed itself to splinter into various groups who are taking positions that are not biblically driven. And when I say biblically driven, I simply mean that the theocrats and theocrat God rules, the people who are ruled by God are now taking sides either on the democratic side of a democracy or the republican side of a democracy and aren't as smart actually as the independents. I say that because if I'm independent of taking either the Democratic side or the Republican side, and I take an independent side, then the independent side should be based on a set of rules or morals that tells me whether or not on any particular issue I should go Republican or I should go Democratic. 
but I'm not locked into either or to the point where I have put my morals in a bag. I have put my principles in a bag and I have forgotten what is pleasing in the sight of God to take a particular side politically. This is the problem with America today. It's that some Christians think that they can be nationalists. Other Christians think that they can be pro-Trump. Other Christians think they can be pro-Biden. At the end of the day, the division in the church is substratum to and augments the division in the country because the country has lost its moral compass. There is absolutely nothing ab about this country that makes it Christian other than the fact that it is not Islamic, it is not Muslim, it is not Buddhist, it is not Hindu. It just doesn't fall in the category of the other religions. But as far as being holy and righteous and standing up for truth and the dignity of biblical principles, it doesn't exist. And that's why Christians are Christians in the label by name, but the real issue is, are you Christian by deed? By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, by your love one toward the other. And that love supersedes politics. It supersedes individual cultish behavior following one man or following another group. It completely supersedes nationalism. You know, to make America great, all right? So we make America great. But in order to make America great, we make America first. In order to make America first, we make America narcissistic, ego, ego maniacal. Every great country has an obligation to the world. Every rich person has an obligation to the people who are around who are poor. Every individual is to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Not give me, but give us. So for this cause, when Paul said in 3.1, they go back to the thought of the Jew and Gentile becoming one in the body of Christ. For this cause, I bow my knees. And that's why when he says he bows his knees, notice what he says very carefully. I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom, notice now why he's praying, the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The issue then is, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a prophet to the Gentiles. I'm the evangelist to the Gentiles. That's Paul. And I've come to you bringing the fact that there is no separation between races in the body of Christ. Jew nor Gentile. Now when he says Jew nor Gentile, the Gentile covers everything that is non-Jewish. So that means the whole universe then is covered in Christ Jesus and there's no separation. So when people take sides, I've heard messages where people are condemned. If you're a Democrat, uh, you're going to hell. If you're a Democrat, you can't come in this church. Well, if democracy is a sin and you are a purist, saved preacher, then it seems like it's the sinner you should go after. So your message should be to save the Democrat or to save the Republican because you transcend putting people in hell over a party. The issue with the homosexual, the issue with the transvestite, the issue with the people who we deem need salvation. Well, you don't ostracize, ostracize somebody who needs salvation. You go after them. If, you, if, if, the, if the wife beat her, the, the husband is abusing his family, you don't throw him to the dogs as a child of God. He needs the word of God. He needs to be influenced through the scriptures. The drug addict, everybody who falls outside 
of Jesus Christ needs the child of God to bring the word to them. Not to divide yourself on political lines, not to divide yourself on, on, on secular lines, not to divide yourself on gender lines. The whole point is, you know what the Bible says, you know what the Bible expects, you know what God is looking for. And if you believe people fall outside of that for whatever reason, you don't throw them to the dogs, you put them, you bring them to the cross. That's the point for those who transcend the circumstances, for those of us who are uh, a thousand feet up or 25 or 30,000 feet up looking at the situation from an angelic point of view, from a revelatory point of view, from a God vision point of view. You're not down here taking sides and ostracizing and disuniting the body of Christ. You, you can't do that. That's why he said, I pray that this body growing into a holy inner sanctuary for the dwelling of God. And, and it's very critical to understand that, that this is why he's on his knees. And this is the prayer that we should have today. And that is that the body of Christ come back into fullness of the principles that governed the word of Christ. Here, Jesus himself said, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world. I, I, listen, I can do that from heaven. He came down into this world to die on the cross, to bring us together in the body of Christ. And I'm telling you, I, I thank God for you. Your numbers are increasing, which means that somebody's reaching out and touching other people and telling them we're on for if it's a few minutes or if it's a long time, uh, we're on. And I think maybe until we move to the new building, I might just fire this thing up at home and do some things with that also. But anyway, he is praying and he's praying earnestly to God that this would happen. And now what is he saying? He says, I want you to, I want that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. And we've been through that. Uh, he bows his knees. He's praying that something is granted to them through the riches of his glory. Now, again, according, not out of, which gives him the freedom to give us everything that is a part of who he is. So that tells me now that I'm not coming for a little bit. It takes all that God is offering us to bring us to that place where we can walk in him and walk according to the power that he gives us through the Holy Spirit. And now where does this enter? This enters into the inner man. Now, once this gets in the inner man, now we're dealing not with outside influences. Uh, how might I put this? Uh, I don't have my boat now. I, I got rid of it, but I had, I had a, a, a 30 foot, a 30, a 40 foot. And I was out with the captain once and the thing, a uh, couple engines quit. One engine quit. Now, I'm glad I had the captain with me because one engine quit. I don't know what to do. Both engines quit. You're at the mercy of the sea and the wind. And the reason you're at the mercy of the sea and the wind is because you have no inner power. The worst thing that can happen, you take a tanker with all of the containers on a tanker or you take, you take a tanker, an oil tanker with millions of gallons of oil. And if that engine stops in the middle of a storm, I don't care how big that thing is, it'll break apart. It'll break apart because it has no internal combustion. It has no power that is independent of the outside. This is why he declares in his prayer that we would be strengthened through the Spirit of God and through the power of God in the inner man. What he's saying essentially is every one of my children need to be fueled from the power of the Holy Ghost and it enters into the very structure of their spirit so that they have internal power.
power. I don't know if I'm clipping, I'm trying to talk loud. I hope I get loud in your house when I talk loud and when I talk soft. Uh, I hope you hear me. It's just, you know, inundation and, uh, you know, inflection and all of that to make a point. The inward man is viewed here now as the recipient. I'm not putting this in your mind for your mind to differ. I'm putting it in the inner man, in the power of your spirit. I'm putting it down in your spirit so your spirit can talk to your mind when the conflict comes. Because the conflict, the wind of doctrine, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, is what's coming to the mind. And in order to offset that being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, you have to have inner power in the inner man. This is the relationship that we have with God. It's an inner relationship that expresses itself through our mouth, through our, the way we handle and treat people, through our behavioral patterns. But the power is not something that vacillates or has vicissitudinous changes based on the climate on the outside. No, no matter what the climate is on the outside, that inner power that's driving us from the inside offsets and combats every single change that is going on around us. That's the prayer that you be strengthened by the inner man. So the inward man now refers to that personal, rational, moral I. It's the essence of the man, which is conscious of itself as a moral personality. So here now is Paul is speaking of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now we're not talking about uh, getting a, just a little taste of the Holy Ghost. He's talking about being filled with the Spirit. See, there are many people who have the Holy Spirit, but they're not controlled by the Holy Spirit because they don't allow the Spirit the freedom. Uh, I think one writer said, grieve not the Spirit. And that is, don't resist it. Allow the Spirit to move, to handle everything that's going on in your mind. I did a little piece on that Sunday. I'm going, I got to go to Toronto soon, and I think I'll do a piece there about the whole issue of the mind. And my question is, what are you thinking? What are you thinking is influenced either by carnality through the flesh or spirituality through the Holy Spirit. And this is the mind. And the mind has to offset the connection to the world. See, many Christians believe they need to make political affiliations. But if you have the affiliation with God that you should, and he's operating in the inner part of your being, that does not mean that you don't give honor to whom honor is due, respect to whom respect is due. That is all a part of your social operation. But your social operation now and your political affiliation it has nothing to do with the power of God in your spirit. Your spirit controls that. That does not control your spirit. That's why I don't have to, I don't care if you're Republican or Democratic or Independent. All I want to know is how much God do you need? How much God do you have to have? I'm not taking sides with anybody to ostracize, criticize, demonize, departmentalize. I'm not into that. I'm here to project truth. And the truth is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's associated with the principles of love. And that overrides anything that's political or even religious. Because at the end of the day, you can be religious and not be spiritual. And that's what we're seeking. That spirituality that is bolstered by and boosted by the Holy Spirit strengthening the inner man. So there's no cult here. I don't worship a man. I don't care who he is, whether Trump or Biden. I don't worship an individual to the point where they can do anything and, and act any way and say anything and be anything. And I have to have an allegiance to them simply because of a political affiliation that ignores my theocratic position. Never. 
My allegiance is to God and God and God first and alone. And it is through that allegiance that I have strength in the inner man to handle the vicissitudinous changes and the vacillation of man in this world. And that's critical to all of us. So yes, I'm an independent. I'm an independent theocrat. I'm not an independent from a political point of view. I'm an independent theocrat. So whatever I decide has to be done through the morality, through the principles that govern me through the Bible and the inner strength of the Holy Spirit. And that's where you should be. Which means then that you have no enemies. You love your enemies. And, and the enemy is not you have an enmity against them. Your enemy is your enemy because they have enmity against you. I have no enmity against anyone. If they're my enemies, they choose to be my enemies. I didn't choose them to be my enemies. And that's why the exercising of praying for people who despitefully use you from a political, from a social, from a family, from a financial, for whatever way, a racial, which is really significant today. I have no enemies. I may be your enemy, but you're not mine. And if I, the Bible says love my enemies, it's because you chose to be my enemy. I didn't choose you to be my enemy. You chose to be my enemy for whatever reason. But I'm not going to sit here and allow you to dictate how I feel about you because you don't have the power to do that. The inner man has already taken the position to strengthen me to handle how ugly you can be. That's the whole point. That's what the body of Christ is to send into this world, into this country, into this state, into this county, into this city, into this neighborhood. The spirit of togetherness. For that cause he prayed. Now, this strengthening then brings that dwelling of Christ. In other words, the house has to be prepared. We're in a building, and yes, we are in the process of purchasing this building, and we're in it now, uh, so that's pretty much done. Uh, but this building is not as it is right now fitted to do and deal with the vision we have. We are going to have to prepare this building to handle what we do. We are not going to acquiesce and succumb to this building and allow the building the way it is to dictate what we do. Oh no, that, that'll never happen. We will tear out everything in here and rebuild it to dwell in it the way we want to. We're looking right now. The purpose of strengthening by the Holy Spirit is given. And what is it? That Christ may dwell in your hearts. In other words, when you met God, when he met you, when he drew, drew you to him, Suru, no man comes except the father, Suru, drag, he knew what he was getting. He bought you with his blood. He bought you with a price. He bought us with a price. So he knew what he was getting. But now he decided, I am going to redo this building so I can dwell in it. I am not going to leave that building in a condition that makes me uncomfortable and does not fulfill what I want. Yeah. Uh, you might as well get ready for God to turn you upside down, turn you inside out, tear down walls, redo walls, rebuild walls, demolish stuff. You might as well get ready because the prayer is that the Holy Ghost strengthen you for the reason of having Christ to dwell in you. To make it so that he is at home and that is to live in a house. It's a uh, catechismai. No, katoi kisai. That's what it is. And it means to dwell, to live 
in as a home to settle down and be at home. And in order to do that, he's got to tear some walls out. He's got to expand some rooms. He's got to make some rooms smaller. He's got to do whatever it is in you, in your spirit, so that he may dwell. So now is him dwelling in you through the strengthening of the Holy Spirit, having refurbished the house. Now everything that emanates from that house is Christ dwelling in the house. So now everything, when you open your mouth, Christ, when you look around Christ, with what you listen to, Christ, with who you'll help and what you'll do, Christ. Why? Because he has taken a boat in the inner man, in the essence of your being, in the nucleus of who you are, in the substratum of everything that you do. He is there in the middle of it. He is there where the power plant is. So that everything that comes out of you is powered by him. And that is through the strengthening of the Holy Spirit, not the weakening of it. He has to strengthen you to handle this kind of dwelling. This kind of dwelling component, this kind of, might I say, tenant. Well, what is it, tenant? Owner is a better word. This owner, he owns this now. He owns it. He bought it with his blood. He put it through propitiation, reconciliation, justification, redemption. He put it through adoption. He owns it. So he can do whatever he wants with it so that whatever comes out of you is Christ. Then he turns around, Paul says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. But that's not something you're reaching for from way out there. It's in you now. All you got to do is transfer his mind from your spirit to your mind by releasing your mind and allowing the Spirit of God to rebuild your mind. And in order to rebuild your mind, whatsoever things are pure, lovely, good report, think on those things. So that means now even my thoughts that I generate are thoughts that are generated not because of the outside environmental systems, but because of that inner strength given by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to stop there today because I see my numbers and I thank you for being with me today. I thank you. Uh, listen, by next week I'm going to go to verse 20. I'm going to run through 19, and we're going into verse 20. And uh, yes, I got to hit that verse 20 next week by the grace of God, because this is powerful. You're going to see that after he makes all of these great prayers for the inner man and for the strength of the body of Christ and the individual, he always goes to the power of God. He does not deal with the exceeding greatness of the power of God to give you a car or a house. You had that before you even came to Christ. You didn't need him to get you a car or a house. You had that before. He let the rain fall on the just and the unjust. These prayers are packing a punch related to the inner man and the strengthening of the individual spirit and soul. Man, that's the greatest thing that God can do for any one of us, is to dwell in us. And to dwell in us after he has refurbished the house, replaced broken parts, put new everywhere. Behold, all things have become new. I hear people telling, uh, you know, whatever the devil stole from me, uh, uh, he's going to bring it back. Man, come on. If he can steal it, he can keep it. Whatever God has for you, the devil can't steal it. Fact. And so the refurbishing, the renewal, the new equipment, the new everything that God has given you, he wants to dwell there because he, you are his workmanship this is what he placed in you for him to enjoy you and for you to enjoy him. And so that calls for power. And we're going to break down power.
power in chapter 20 like you have never heard power broken down according to the scriptures. Not me. I'm not breaking it down. This is no revelatory experience. This is illumination. This is not, he didn't reveal it to me. He, it's right here in front of me. All I've got to do is break it down to you. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. You got to come back for that. You can't miss that. And I've got to deliver that. So I thank you for uh, being with us, Father. We thank you for the saints. We thank you for them just hanging in there with us with our inconsistency. But our inconsistency is going to become the platform for a whole new and wonderful move of your spirit. And so we thank you and we ask you to give the saints the patience, help them to continue to support and continue to be there for us and with us as we are there for them. And we pray for the victory now. Save somebody, touch somebody. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if we have the numbers up for you to call, and we do. So the numbers are there. Somebody is waiting anxiously. We can break down buildings, build buildings, but we will not break down your ability to communicate with us as it relates to your salvation. So I'm praying, I'm praying earnestly that you would call us. And if you need anything, call us. We're, we're, we, we haven't left the world. We're here with you. We're just making a transition that makes it difficult. Now, here is where we'll be. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but we are going to the Greater Emmanuel Temple, and it's 3740 East Imperial Highway, and it's in Linwood, California, and we're going there the first Sunday in October, God's willing. We're going to Pastor Neon's, uh, Nissan Stewart, and we're going to go at 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock so that they can have their usual service. I know that 8 o'clock is hard for many, but rise and shine and come. We're going because of many reasons, but one reason is they're equipped to do what we need to do and without any kind of hitches. We don't, we don't need any more hitches. While we're in this transition, we want you to be able to reach us and be comfortable with us. And we want to be comfortable with you. We don't want to lose you. We love you too much. And we don't want to lose you. And we want to be able to minister to you into perpetuity. And so God bless you today. Heaven smile on you. Remember, not this Sunday, not next Sunday. And please don't come over to the new building because we're not having church here yet. 20, 30 people were here this Sunday, but we're not here yet. We've got to have occupancy permits. We've got to have architects tearing out, uh, draw, making drawings. And we've got to tear out space for 1,400 seats, hopefully. We've got to, you know, make it state of the art, get everything ready so that when we come on, we're hitting the world, touching people everywhere with just the best that we can give. And so don't come here. We're still at Page Temple Church of God in Christ over on West Adams. We were there until the end of this month and the first Sunday in October, we're going to Greater Emmanuel Temple. Again, 3740 East Imperial Highway. And that's in Linwood, California. And so I have to say it over and over again so you get it. And we will put it out on every one of our social media platforms so that you can have it. We're looking for you. Hold on. Be strong. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to go. If it's, in, if it's out of a bathroom, we're going to keep on teaching and keep on preaching until the Lord calls us home. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. We love you and thank you. Uh, Omar, we, we thank you. Uh, Tabula, Tabula Risa, Life Center, thank you again uh, to all the pe wonderful people I mentioned before. 
Uh, Kimberly, I see you're here now. Regina is here. Karen is here. Uh, I thank you for holding up the bloodstained banner all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. I thank God for no less person than Ronnie Dowdy, my good friend Ronnie. I'm glad you're on. We, we're not quitting. We're not letting you go. We're not letting you down. It's just that we're working so diligently to uh, get this place up and running. And uh, we had to wait until the right deal came, the right place. And I'm, I tell you, uh, this is the place that God has sent us to for such a time as this. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. We love you. And we'll see you soon.